As I've been watching the news this past week and as I've been um, looking at social media, it's clear that the conversation around racism has really ramped up right now. And that's really important, a really important conversation to be having. Um, these protests that are happening in many major US cities um, are a result of racism. The blatant targeting and murders of George Floyd and Ahmed Aubrey um, over the past month, but also uh, just the many ways that African American men and women have been targeted by police and ordinary citizens um, on a daily basis in, U in the U.S. Um, and so these protests, these conversations around racism, they need to happen because what's happening is um, there's conversations around naming evil for evil because that's what racism is. It's evil and it's wrong and it's unjust. It is not what God intends because it denies a person's basic belovedness, the basic humanity that we all carry within us. Protesting can, at its best, can name what is evil and demand and call for and work towards change. It raises up our under our sight so that we see an issue for what it is, and asks us to continue the work even once protesting ends. And so, protesting can be really important work. Obviously, when violence is happening within protests, that is um, something that we grieve and mourn as well because violence is not the way in which we wish to respond. But protesting at its best is well work that needs to be done. And when I watch these protests, part of me becomes very overwhelmed. If I'm being honest, I would like to imagine that I live in a society in which racism does not exist. That I would like to um, say that in my own heart, there are no seedlings of racism at all. That I would like to say, I would like to ask the question, like, haven't we grown enough that racism would be annihilated by now? Hasn't the spirit been at work long enough? And yet we know that the seedlings of racism live in our own hearts, that society that many people in our world experience this. All we have to do is look at the stories that have been told in the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, even in Canada, um, that racism was not something that has just been experienced in the past, but is something that they still continually experience, that our brothers and sisters um, experience racism. I've also heard a number of stories from um, people of color who are my friends and acquaintances in Canada, in Red Deer and in Vancouver, who are experiencing racism, who are afraid to walk outside because of the ways in which at this point in our current context, um, the ways in which racism is showing up in a very large and clear way. I think that racism has always been with us. We see that our ancestors have talked about it, um, that in scripture it's talked about, in the Heidelberg Catechism it's pointed to, that these things must be annihilated. And so we grieve that this is still a reality. We say and name that it is wrong and we desire as a church to work for the unity and the recognition that all are beloved and are to be treated with kindness and respect and that we look out for the care of our neighbor. This week, Chad and I will be talking a little bit more about racism, and so we just invite you to begin thinking about how you see it in our world, in our culture, and in our own hearts. Um, and we do so always recognizing that racism in all its forms is wrong and evil and not what God intends. So I invite you to think about that and to perhaps even spend some time in silence to honor all those who experience racism.